There are so many stars shining in the sky, so many beautiful things winking at you, but when Venus comes out, all the others are waned. They are pushed to the background. Mehmet Muratildan. Hello, dear friends. In today's video, we would like to continue our series of videos about the planets of the solar system. If you haven't seen our video about the first planet, Mercury, you can find it by clicking on the prompt in the upper right corner. Today, we will tell you about the history of discovery, main characteristics, and interesting facts of the second planet from the Sun, Venus. Sit back and let's begin. History of Discovery Venus is the brightest of the planets visible from Earth, which is why it has been studied since ancient times. The first records of Venus appeared in Babylon, where it was named Ishtar, after the goddess of love, war, and strife. The Romans saw Venus as the goddess of beauty, while the Maya believed that the planet represented Kukul Khan, the god of wind, water, fire, and air. Interestingly, in manuscripts that have survived to this day, the Maya described the complete cycle of Venus's movement. The first observations of Venus through an optical telescope were made by Galileo Galilei in 1610. Galileo discovered that Venus exhibits phases proving that it shines with reflected sunlight from the sun, something that wasn't clear in earlier astronomy. Then in 1639, the English astronomer Jeremy Horrocks observed the transit of Venus across the sun's disk. 120 years later, on the 6th of June, 1761, the Russian scientist Mikhail Lomonosov discovered the atmosphere of Venus. Before the first space probes explored Venus in the second half of the 20th century, there was very little information about its surface, leaving room for writers' and filmmakers' imaginations. Even many scientists of that time, considering the similarities between Venus and Earth's major parameters, believed that conditions on Venus might be relatively close to those on Earth. It was assumed that there could be liquid water and possibly a biosphere, maybe even with higher forms of life. As a result, in popular culture, the world of Venus was often portrayed as an analogue to Earth's Mesozoic era a wet, tropical world inhabited by giant reptiles. However, in the second half of the 20th century, when space probes reached Venus, it became evident that these depictions were drastically incorrect. Venus's surface conditions not only rule out the possibility of life similar to Earth's, but also present significant challenges for robotic missions made of titanium and steel. Exploration with space probes during the space age, Venus has been explored by more than 20 artificial spacecraft. Initially, scientists were uncertain about the atmospheric pressure for which the instruments should be designed. As a result, the landing probes initially couldn't reach the surface in working condition. They were designed for lower atmospheric pressures, leading to their destruction. In February 1961, the Soviet probe Venera-1 flew at a distance of about 100,000 kilometers from Venus and entered a heliocentric orbit. Mariner 2 approached the planet in August 1962 and detected high atmospheric density and surface temperature. The Soviet space probe Venera-3 became the first to enter Venus's atmosphere. In June 1967, almost simultaneously, Venera-4 from the USR and Mariner 5 from the USA were launched. The descending probe of Venera 4 was destroyed at an altitude of 23 kilometers above Venus's surface. However, it was this probe that first determined the composition of the planet's atmosphere. Scientists compared the data from Venera 4 with the results from Mariner 5 and determined that the pressure at the surface is around 100 bars. In 1970, Venera 7 became the first spacecraft to successfully land on Venus's surface, and by 1975, the Soviet probes Venera 9 and Venera 10 transmitted the first panoramas of the planet's surface to Earth. The photos showed numerous rocks, ranging from tiny to meter-sized, scattered across loose soil. Three years later, thanks to the American probe Pioneer Venus 1, the first detailed map of Venus's surface relief was created, and in 1982, Humanity received the first color photographs of the planet, revealing that Venus's material is similar to Earth's basalts found in deep ocean trenches. Since the 1990s, interest in Venus exploration has somewhat declined, especially compared to Mars. In the last 30 years, 
Only three space probes have been sent to Venus compared to 15 for Mars, the American Magellan, the European Venus Express, and the Japanese Akatsuki. Additionally, Venus is regularly used for gravitational maneuvers on the way to other bodies in the solar system, both inner and outer ones. Main Characteristics Venus's dimensions are similar to Earth's, which is why it is sometimes called Earth's sister. Venus has a radius of 6,052 kilometers, which is 95% of Earth's, and its volume is 86% that's of Earth. However, the similarities end there. Venus rotates on its axis in the opposite direction compared to all other planets. Some hypotheses suggest that this could have been caused by intense cataclysms, possibly collisions with other celestial bodies during the early history of the planet. There are also speculations that Mercury was once a moon of Venus, but later lost its connection with it. Venus's rotation on its axis is extremely slow, completing one rotation in 243 Earth days. However, its orbital period around the Sun, a Venusian year, is only 224.7 Earth days, the stellar day on Venus is longer than its year. However, the rotation around the Sun also changes the daytime zones on Venus, those currently illuminated by sunlight. Therefore, the length of a day for an observer on Venus, not looking at it from a distance, is much shorter, 116.8 Earth day. Among all the planets, Venus's orbit around the Sun is the closest to a perfect circle. It lacks the elliptical eccentricity characteristic of Mercury and Pluto, the distance between Venus and the Sun at perihelion and aphelion is nearly the same, 107.5 and 109 million kilometers, respectively. According to research data from space probes, Venus has a weak magnetic field capable of deflecting solar radiation. The most significant feature of Venus is its extraordinarily dense atmosphere. The pressure on the planet's surface is 92 times greater than Earth's atmospheric pressure, and roughly equivalent to the pressure at a depth of 900 meters in water. Venus is constantly covered with a thick layer of clouds made of sulfuric acid, obscuring the view of its surface from the outside. The Venusian atmosphere is over 96% carbon dioxide, with nearly all the remaining portion being nitrogen. Sulfur is likely added from volcanic eruption. Thunderstorms and lightning occur in Venus's atmosphere. The clouds rain sulfuric acid, which, however, evaporates before reaching the surface due to the intense heat at altitude. The dense atmosphere creates an extreme greenhouse effect, trapping solar heat. Despite being much farther from the sun and receiving only a quarter of the solar energy that Mercury gets, Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. Due to the greenhouse effect, the average temperature on Venus is around plus 467 degrees Celsius, while on Mercury it doesn't exceed plus 427 degrees at the equator, even at maximum. Because of the thick atmosphere, Venus's surface experiences semi-darkness even during the daytime. The brightness during the day is similar to Earth during twilight. Interesting facts. As mentioned earlier, there are theories that in the past, Mercury was a moon of Venus, but was subsequently lost. In 1976, Tom van Flanden showed through numerical modeling that this hypothesis could explain Mercury's large orbital deviations, its resonant orbit around the Sun, and the loss of angular momentum for both Mercury and Venus. This scenario also explains Venus acquiring retrograde rotation, contrary to most other planets in the solar system, heating up its surface and developing a dense atmosphere. In the past, numerous claims were made about observing moons of Venus, but they always turned out to be based on errors. The first such claims date back to the 17th century. Over a 120-year period until 1770, reports of observing Venusian moons were made over 30 times by at least 20 astronomers. By 1770, the search for Venusian moons was almost abandoned. Most of the features on Venus's surface are named after female figures. The exceptions are the Alpha and Beta regions, as well as the Maxwell Mountains. This is because among all the major and well-known planets, only Venus was named after a female figure. As people say, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Venus has long been a subject of interest for scientists worldwide, and they continue to study this planet with increasing effort. 
Perhaps someday, with the advancement of new technologies, we will be able to say, yes, we can call good Venus. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the comments what you would like to see in the next video. Thank you, and see you next time.